What's good, mind speakers? I'm back with a video. Um, I haven't done a video like this in a long time. Usually when I come on the camera to talk, I'm talking about some music. I'm talking about something. There's something that people want my opinion on. And so I'm cutting the camera on to kind of feed the machine that I've created, this 20 Days of June wheel. And I kind of want to take a step back from that and just kind of talk about the frustrations. Or not really frustrations, but what I'm realizing the disconnect is between me and YouTube. Because y'all have seen that there's some form of a disconnect. So you probably saw the title and you're probably freaking out. But before you start freaking out, can you just let me explain? Can you just let me you let me talk before you start talking? Because because it's me time, not you time. Shut up. Listen, here's the deal. When I say being a YouTuber isn't for me, that doesn't mean I'm quitting YouTube. Of course I'm not going to quit YouTube. But being a YouTuber is not for me in a traditional sense, if that makes any sense. Let me explain. When I got onto YouTube, it was the beginning of 2017, and we were in a heavy reaction culture time where everyone just wanted to cut on the song and play and scream that was the way it was going they wanted to cut on the song they wanted to sit in their car and they wanted to just go yo this is dope and they wanted to make faces while the song was playing and there was no content there was no content and, and i didn't like that and i'm a talker you guys know i'm a vocalizer i pick things apart i want to find out why i want to know who wrote this and why and i treat everything all this music like a workshop almost and that was my specific brand of content when I came out, is that I wanted to shake shit up. I wanted shit to be different, other than just you cutting on the camera and you yelling. Because that's what was going on, and I didn't want to be a part of that. And, you know, for a while, when I was doing it, I had no subscribers. It was very different for me. I was under a thousand, I think, for over a year, and it was hard for me. Um, trying to do YouTube with artistic integrity was hard for me because nobody was doing it. Everybody was just going for the clicks. Everybody was going for the views. Everybody's going for the fast reaction. Everybody was was doing that. And I couldn't keep up. But I didn't want to. And to be honest, I still don't want to. Like when a song comes out and the song comes out on Thursday night, the person hears it once on Friday morning, records once on Friday before 11 and then the video's out by one. There are people who can do that. And they can feel fine about that. I've never been that person. I still, to this day, won't put myself in that position. I like to sit with music. I like to talk about the way music makes me feel. I like to feel differently about it. I like, I love when I hate a song when I first hear it, and then it grows on me, or vice versa. I love when I love a song, and then that shit ends up ass. I love that about music, is that it's, it's this chemical reaction that happens within you, and it's more or less teaching you about your own body chemistry. And, with that being said, that's my favorite part about music is that it makes me feel something. But it takes time. And YouTube and uh, all that shit doesn't allow that because people want to get the videos out fast and it's all about the race to be first. And I've never wanted to win the race to be first. And I have suffered because of that. I know I've suffered. My content is fucking good. And my talk, I know, is better than a lot of talk. But I can't sacrifice my artistic integrity to be a part of a rat race. Because every time that I felt like I had to put a video out first, I don't like it. The, video, the views come, but I'm not satisfied with my art or, or what I put forth. And I can't do that. That's not what I, what I started this for. I started YouTube uh, because I didn't see myself reflected in the content sphere that was going on. And to an extent, I still don't. <laughs> I still don't, but I know that's because that's my job to get my voice out there and to get more people like me surrounded by me and to represent us. Like everybody who's subscribed to this channel has aligned with me in one way or another. We're a very niche group in the way that we think, in the way that we process things, in the way that we want to know more, in the way that we speculate, in the ways that we're okay with being wrong. Like, a lot, I love that we're not afraid to just get into a situation and pick it apart and say what if, or how about these two work together, or or what about this producer? We always are thinking of, we are we are this big encyclopedia of, of the music industry in a lot of ways on this channel. And not just me, because it's you guys in the comments too, and you guys throw me ideas. Hey yo, like, what if, I love that about us. And YouTube really doesn't allow for it. I'm not gonna lie, YouTube doesn't really allow for it because of the game. 
because now we started off in that heavy reaction culture when then all of a sudden the copyright shit got crazy so there were no more reaction videos and so the reaction youtubers had to figure out what they were going to do and what do you think they started doing what i do and not only that celebrities have fucked up the game youtubers indie youtubers smaller youtubers specifically black youtubers have to now battle with will smith and ti and joe budden and a lot of really popular people who may or and charlamagne now that may or may not have tv shows or didn't get their tv show picked up that have now run to youtube so now youtube has become in a lot of ways free cable and a lot of youtubers or like non-famous people with cameras i guess we'll call us are now stuck behind the eight ball because when people come to youtube all that's getting promoted is famous people's content because it brings the ad dollars and it's fast and that's just pushed the black youtuber farther down the pipeline when it comes to exposure we didn't get any exposure as it is i already knew coming into this as a black youtuber i could have the best points I could have the most wholesome content. I could have the best message. I will never get the Logan Paul push. That's not going to happen. And that's okay because I don't make content that I feel like is that ingestible. And I don't feel like I'm a person that's for everybody. I do feel like, like I'm a person that's like an acquired taste at times. And I like that about me. That's not something that I'm trying to change. I'm not trying to be for everybody. But with that being said, that's fucking up the game. Because us smaller YouTubers, we love doing YouTube, but we would be lying to you if we were telling you that we don't want to make money. And we do. But to stand out in this world, you might have to do things that don't spark your creative interest. And so now I'm stuck in a situation where I've had all these ideas for the past couple months. And now I'm thinking, am I just doing this because it'll make money? Am I not doing this? Am I not going to post this video because I don't feel like it's going to do well or make money and I don't have time? I have to think about this income. This, this uh, It's killing the creative. It's fully killing the creative. And I'm not the only person who I know it's killing the creative in. But I'm also going to tell you that as music gets hollow, music is the nucleus of this YouTube shit. And music has gotten more hollow. The songs have gotten shorter. The writing has gotten thinner because the songs don't last as long. So people aren't spending as much time creating content. So if a song has no rhyme scheme, it's only two minutes. And although it's from your fave, I can't give you a 10 minute video on that. And so that creates another issue. But that's YouTube that made it so that way in order for you to maximize, you know, the amount of views and, and maximize all that shit, your video has to be at least 10 minutes. And so all these rules have come together to create this big paralysis by analysis where I feel like I sometimes don't know what to do because I've created this platform with you know think tank and litter skip and all these different segments that i can bounce into to be able to keep the thing going and for branding and i think it was a great idea and it was a great thing to do because that branding is necessary as a youtuber but in a lot of ways it's fucked up my creative and i don't want to do it anymore when i say being a youtuber isn't for me this whole being a YouTuber in a traditional sense shit isn't for me. But I've never been a traditionalist. And I think realistically the only reason why maybe things with me started to get a little bit traditional-ish is in the pursuit of trying to fund my life with YouTube. I want YouTube to make me money. And I think all creatives feel like that because you feel like maybe your art is valid once it funds your life. Once that art pays that bill, if you've ever done that, which I've done before now, but if you've ever done that, there's no better feeling than feeling like I'm giving of myself to the world and it's bringing me back riches in any form that I can fund my life with or do fun things with the people I love with or even nourish myself with. My life and my expression being my work, it, it means something and I don't know why, but I say this all the time with, with singers and rappers and shit. When that becomes the goal and not the pursuit of creating the art becomes the goal, the art gets fucked up, which is why the second album is bad. And I don't want to be in the second album phase of my YouTube career. I always want to be able to cut on the camera and just talk and not have to worry about, oh, is this going to reach an audience or are people going to care or am I going to lose subscribers or, or I don't care. I can't care because if I care, then... 
then I can't do my job. This channel has to change with me. You guys have watched me change in a ton of ways. And so this channel has to grow as I grow. And so I'm ready to bring the channel back up to speed where the channel feels more like me. Which means there are certain things you can't expect from me and there are certain things you can. not If your fave drops a song that's two minutes, don't expect a 10 minute video on it. But that doesn't mean you can't expect a video on it. I don't necessarily wanna wait for a large think tank to be able to talk to you. So maybe the videos will get shorter, but they'll get more frequent. Maybe you'll get two minutes a day, five minutes. Maybe instead of 20 minutes once a week, you'll get five minutes four times. Maybe that's what happens, who knows. But we have to shake shit up here because we have to shake up content. Content is in a bad place right now. There's nothing to talk about other than content about content. People doing podcasts on podcasts and YouTube videos on podcasts that are on YouTube. And like, I don't wanna discuss other people's unpacking of anything. And I feel like a lot of times that's the issue is that now it's Joe Budden on his podcast unpacks a song and we have to discuss the drama because he already discussed the song. That's not what I'm about to do. And that's no shade to Joe, I love Joe, I love that podcast. I really do, I watch it all the time, it's actually on the screen right now. But my point is, I don't want to do that. I want my own content and I'm not gonna succumb to that. Uh, you're not gonna cut on this camera and, and watch me discussing G Herbal's baby moms and Alexis Sky and this dumb shit. I'm not discussing shade room shit. I don't want to and I think maybe at one point I did want to maybe a little bit more but I did dead don't want to now. If you're looking for think tanks to have that in them but have no other point behind it, you're never gonna get a video out of me that you like. I'm not discussing shade room cousin drama. That's not who I am and that's not what we're doing going forth. If you guys wanna help me out, go join my Patreon. It's only $2 a month. I'm kicking that back up as well. We're gonna get into some content over there. We'll have a conversation over there a week. Those are just the ways that I'm trying to be able to be more available to the YouTube space as I build what I want my brand to be now. 20 Days of June was once fun for me, but it became a point where it was not. And that's okay, but that's because I've changed and the machine that I built didn't because it was lucrative. And I wanted it to remain a certain amount as lucrative. And I think that that's something that we just do as people. We search for stability, but I can't allow my creative to die there. So this is a risk, what I'm about to do. I'm about to just shake the shit up. I'm about to do a, I'm about to just go against all these SEO rules and all the shit that I've learned. I'm just gonna just say fuck it, I am. And I'm gonna just throw fire to the rain and I'm gonna do whatever I want. So I have some videos on my laptop that I hadn't put out because I was trying to figure out when. You're just gonna get them. I don't care what time of day, I don't care about none of that shit. I'm just gonna put them out, catch it while you can. We're just gonna recklessly create content the way that I was before. No, there's no schedule, sorry about it. I'm just gonna try to get it out until it makes sense. In the process, you guys are gonna learn a lot more about me, you'll learn a lot more about the last year of my life and all the shit I've been through and you know my new perspective on a bunch of stuff. I've got some reactions to some shows I've been watching. I've been watching a lot more TV than I've even been enjoying music. We've got some good cultural conversations with some Netflix shows. We just got some, some good shit going on. And I, I wanna involve some people that I know have dope voices too, that I know can contribute to a conversation. Cause I'm good alone in a room, but I'm better in a room with people I love. So yeah, I've got a lot of fun things that I need to put forth into this channel for this channel to reflect me. And as I get this together, I appreciate you guys' patience. Um, but yeah, no more expecting 10 minute videos for two minute songs. Cause I guarantee you, I don't give that much of a fuck. I don't care who it is, I just don't, <laughs> I just don't. So yeah, I'm gonna go back to editing the video that's gonna be going up on my Patreon and some more videos that's gonna keep going up here and we're gonna rock and roll from here. And it may not make sense now, or maybe it does, I don't know, but I know it'll make sense later. Point is, no, being a YouTuber is not for me. But no, it was never for me. I just got really caught up in wanting to find stability. And uh, I think I still do. I think we all do. Um, but there's a piece of this game that I know I got here from just radical self-expression. And I know I've always had a smart mind behind it. But more important than the smart mind has always just been this reckless need to just create.
And so I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do that. And I gotta stop worrying about other shit. And it's gotta just be more about, this is who I am, this is what I do. And the rest of the shit will come. Which sounds, it's so much easier to say than to do, but I'm gonna do it anyway, man. I'm just gonna give you all the content. And I just thank you guys for bearing with me as I grow up, man, I'm growing up. A lot is changing in here and out here and out here. You know, I just I just don't want to feel like something as impactful and and life altering as the death of Kobe Bryant, which is a crazy thing that I had just said. Um, I don't want to feel like something like that happens and fucks me up the way it did. And I can't cut on the camera and talk about it because I'm like, well, my audience don't want that. My audience is still waiting on this video. My audience wants to hear about Normani or, or the Nicki song or whatever the fuck. No, this channel doesn't belong to anyone but me. And it belongs to me and, and, and what I gotta get off. So there's certain things that, that do have to happen on this channel that you guys will have to bear with me as I express. And yes, we will still talk about music. And yes, if there's more music you want me to talk about, please let me know. I have to get back even to listening to the shit because there's so much shit out that you can miss it and it's, it's a lot. But I'm getting it together and this video is my way of kind of reconnecting with you and letting you know what's going on. So yeah, those of you who are on my Patreon, I'll catch you there. I've got a video about three songs I was wrong about because there are three songs that I have changed my mind about, which I like. I'm going to come on here and I'm going to admit all the times where I was wrong. <laughs> like I'm going to keep going through my old videos and being like, was I right or was I wrong? No, I was wrong. I'm going to do that and those are going to be fun. And yeah. We're going to rock and roll from here, so thank you for listening if you made it this far. If you didn't make it this, if you didn't make it this far, that's fine. I don't really care, but you know. Somehow I've amassed 33,500 something of you guys, and I appreciate every single one of you that may have seen me and said, mm, I want to put this person in my phone. 33,000 people did that. Whether they watched currently or not, 33,000 people saw a video of mine at one time and said, I want to put this person in my phone. And I think that's fucking cool. And I don't think I want to do this for any other reason than that. Just to connect with people. Like-minded people. Huh. All right, I guess that's all I had to say about that, I think. Um, anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If not, suck a dick, and I'll be seeing you guys very soon. Deuce.